God's peace be with all of you. Are there Christians who are thieves? Yes. There are a lot of them in the world. You can find them on the streets, in buses, in other people's houses, in government, in corporate offices. They pick pockets, hold people up, ransack homes, tamper scales, overpriced goods, accept bribes, evade taxes. Many are just nominally Christians. Now, we who are in the Lord would not think of deliberately breaking God's commandment not to steal. But stealing is not just taking money or things from others. For authentic Christians, the definition and scope of thievery is expanded. Let us look at the cleansing of the temple by Jesus. Jesus drove out those engaged in buying and selling and overturned the money changers' tables. He said to them, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but you are turning it into a den of thieves. Why den of thieves? There are two aspects of thievery here. First, there was actual commercial exploitation of pilgrims, with money changers exacting more than the value of the temple tax. Then, there was the selling of doves used as sacrificial offerings. The sellers were overcharging the pilgrims. But it was more than commercial exploitation. The temple was God's house, a house of prayer for all peoples. The commercial activities were robbing God's house of the dignity and purpose. The commercial activity was noisy and dirty. There was a loss of God's presence and awe. God's house was being robbed of its dignity and solemnity. Now, it is easy enough for us to recognize the first aspect of thievery and avoid the same. We would not steal money from another or shamelessly exploit our fallen ma fellow man. But how about the second aspect? Many Christians, perhaps without even recognizing it, can fall short and become part of a den of thieves. How? When we do not render to God what is His due. This can happen in many ways. For example, when we do not pray or read God's Word in the Bible regularly, because this robs God of the time and worship due to Him. Or when we do not exercise financial stewardship, including tithing, because we know that everything we have comes from and belongs to God, and we are merely managing these for Him. If we spend our money just on ourselves, then we are robbing God. What else? We are also thieves when we do not actively evangelize because we rob other people of the new life which God intends for them. Now you might protest and say, but I didn't do anything to that person. I don't even know him. But that is precisely the point. Jesus says in Matthew 12 verse 30, He who does not gather with me scatters. If we do not obey Jesus' command to proclaim the gospel, if we do not become God's co-workers for the harvest, if we do not make use of opportunities God gives us, then we are, by our inaction, allowing people to continue in darkness. We could have been channels of God's grace to them, but we did not act. We could have gathered, but did not, and so they remain scattered and lost. So what is a Christian thief? He is one who robs God of what is his due, or one who steals from others what God intended them to have. Theft is not just when we actually and physically take something from someone, but also when, through our inaction, we deprive others of what is rightfully theirs. None of us can say that we are no longer Christian thieves. We still occasionally rob God and rob others in some way or another. And for this, we ought to repent and strive to mend our ways. As Paul says in Ephesians 4, verse 28, One who has been stealing must steal no longer. God bless you.